In my first puppetry segment, I talked about general techniques for successfully manipulating hand puppets. In this segment, I'll be talking about finger puppets and give you some tips on using them effectively in your classroom or library. Finger puppets have many advantages. They're affordable, easy to carry around, and very non-threatening due to their small size, even for children who are very shy. A finger puppet can be an excellent one-on-one -on -one greeter or a good goodbye puppet. Oh, but I don't want to say goodbye. I just got here. It can provide an effective segue between two activities. The puppet can conveniently live in your pocket and make periodic appearances during formal programming or simply during casual moments. Many of the points that I made about using hand puppets are also true for finger puppets, specifically the following points. Go ahead and say it's a puppet. What? I'm a puppet? You're kidding, right? Believe in your puppet. Yeah, I'll be much more convincing that way. Watch the puppet while you're animating it. That's because the audience will watch where you're watching. Yeah, everybody look at me, look at me right now. If you give the puppet a particular voice, you must maintain it. Make sure there's effective eye contact between the audience and the puppet. And embrace and enjoy your finger puppet characters. Hey, what's not to like? I'm simply adorable, aren't I? I encourage you to watch the video clip, Bringing Your Puppet to Life, if you haven't yet done so, because it will help you gain confidence in building all sorts of puppetry skills and bringing all sizes of puppets to life for your students. In addition to those guidelines, there are several important points to remember that are unique to finger puppets. First, they have an extremely limited range of motion, just by their very nature. Unlike the hand puppets, that can usually maybe wave, wave their hands around or, or scratch their heads, the finger puppets are limited to pretty gross motor movements, um, back and forth motions and up and down, and appearing in and out of um, different places. You probably have only just one finger in the back of the finger puppet or at the most two. And as a result, it can be really challenging to make that puppet seem animated and alive. One way to do so is by having the puppet pop in and out of various locations, as well as turn back and forth as they look at the audience. Another point to remember is that a finger puppet the sounds and the voice need to be appropriate to its size as well as to its character. Yeah, I'm just a little mouse, so I have a tiny little mouse voice like this, a little squeaky one. Wouldn't it be kind of silly if I sounded like this? Oh, I'm a big mouse. You're yeah, listening to my big voice. Huh, yeah, I'm just a little mouse, so I have a little voice. A finger puppet's success as part of group programming depends in part upon the size of the group. If the group is really big, children sitting at the sides or at the back won't be able to see a finger puppet clearly enough for it to be used in any extended way, such as to dramatize an entire story. Incorporating the finger puppet into short rhymes or activities where its sudden appearance is the goal, however, can be very effective. Even if part of the audience is some distance away, they can see the movement of the puppet's sudden appearance and they'll be able to follow and enjoy the action. An example of this sort of activity where the puppet's appearance is of key importance is with this little activity called Mouse House. I'm going to demonstrate it for you just briefly. I have a little house here. Do any of you have any ideas what kind of puppet might live in this house? Do you think it would be a great big elephant puppet who would live in this little house? Oh, I don't think so. Maybe if it was a tiny elephant, it could. How about, how about a great big tall giraffe? Could a big tall giraffe live in this little house? No, it's got to be a little puppet, doesn't it? Yes, well, this is a mouse house, and some little tiny mice live in this house. And if we say a little poem, we can possibly get them to peek out at us. The poem goes like this. Inside the little house, there lives a little mouse. 
hear him scamper, hear him creep. He'll look out if you say peep. Peep. Oh, oh, sure enough, we did it. Hey, little mouse, can you say hi to the kids? Can you all say hi back to the mouse in mouse language just like that? Oh, did you understand us? What is he saying? Yes, you understood us. Well, now I have a question. Um, I told the kids that this is a mouse house and several mice live here. Are, are there more mice that live here? There are. Do any elephants live here? What's he saying? No, not any elephants. But now, um, if we call for the next mouse, do you think do you think that mouse will maybe peek out? Is is it a boy mouse? No. Is is it a girl mouse? Yes. All right. Well, why don't you say goodbye to the kids and we'll see if the other mouse will peek out, okay? Say goodbye. Eee! Can you say goodbye back? Eee! All right. See you later. All right. Well, let's try that poem again and see if we can get the little girl mouse to peek out through the window of the house. Here we go. Inside the little house, there lives a little mouse. Hear her scamper, hear her creep. She'll look out if you say peep, peep. Oh, sure enough, there she is. Let's say hi to her in mouse language like we already tried for the boy. Oh, did you understand us? You did. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. Now, are there any more mice living here in this house? What is she saying? Yes, it is, um, is it a big mouse? No, is, is it a tiny mouse? Yes, a baby mouse? Yes, a little tiny baby mouse. Is it a boy? No, is it a girl? Yes, okay, do you think baby will peek out if, if we say the poem? You're not sure? Should we be a little quiet? Okay, so we don't scare the baby. All right, say goodbye to everybody. Eee! All right, we'll see you later. Let's say goodbye. Eee! Ah, thanks. All right, let's try that poem one more time and see if the little baby mouse will peek out. All right, we're going to be a little bit quiet. It's a little baby. We don't want to scare it. All right, here we go. Inside the little house, there lives a baby mouse. Hear her scamper. Hear her creep. She'll look out if you say peep. Peep. Oh, oh is it the baby? It's the baby. Do you think the baby's going to say anything? <coughs> oh, what a loud baby. Oh my goodness. What fun to visit the mouse house. I wonder what they're going to do next. Who knows? The little mouse house rhyme invites participants to command each mouse's appearance through the windows of the little house. And as you heard, you can scratch the inside of the house really surreptitiously as the mice scamper and creep. And that causes the audience to be quiet and listen attentively for those sounds, which promotes targeted listening. When the little mice pop out of the windows like that, um, from behind the window curtains, they have enough range of motion to allow them to move um, back and forth and of course to nod their heads yes and no. Um, they, can, they could twitch or they could sniff. They could sniff at the audience or maybe they could sniff at um, something that you're, you're offering them. So um, what, 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 do you, what do you think? What do you think? Would you, would you like a little piece of of cheese? Oh, I think he would like some cheese. All right. You can take it in there with you. So the structure is extremely flexible and it allows you to weave in a whole wide range of early literacy experiences and skills. For example, you know, maybe your little mouse um, would enjoy sharing some, some poetry with the kids or a nursery rhyme. Yeah, 
that would be a great idea. Um, or maybe the little mouse will give you an envelope. Let's see. Let's see what is in here. An envelope. You're welcome. With the letter of the day in it. Who knows? What do you think? Oh, sh it's letter M, of course, M for mouse. That's probably why they chose it. Or maybe those little mice that took that piece of cheese you gave them and nibbled it into a letter shape. You know, your finger puppet could be a tiny teacher willing to share little tidbits of information. You can make little finger puppet dwellings from all sorts of things. Um, this mouse house that I just demonstrated was made from a, a letter box or an, an envelope box. You can use cereal boxes or oatmeal boxes. One creative Head Start teacher even suggested using a work boot to make it into a little puppet house. And you can either use the real thing or you can make a cutout out of cardboard and, and paint it and just Velcro it onto the front of a box. And that works great too. There are so many ways to use finger puppets with children. Because of their small size and their affordability, you can readily expand your collection to enhance the various topics or themes that you're studying with your class or group. Children love to see creatures that are smaller than themselves and they'll be enthusiastic to join you in this versatile, playful springboard to various learning activities. Please see the Finger Puppets demonstration segment for some examples. The possibilities are truly endless.